I'm Dr. Akhilesh Pandey. I'm a professor of genetic medicine, oncology, pathology, and biological chemistry at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine in Baltimore in the US. Oncology is going through a lot of changes, and these are very rapid shifts. Right now, there are advances in genomics that allow one to tailor therapy, at least in a subset of patients. There are also advances in the field of immunotherapy that allow special treatments, again, to a subset of patients. And this is proving, at least based on the early clinical trials, extraordinarily successful. And then there are also advances that allow us to detect get some cancers early and also to monitor them. In India, the clinical research has not taken off in a big way, but I can see the signs that it is about to take off. There are certain hospitals that specialize in cancer care that are starting to invest in cancer research, both at the basic science level and at the clinical level. And I think given the patient load that we have in India, and also the younger generation that is getting started in all types of technologies, from imaging to other types of diagnostics, and also the use of informatics. I think uh, it is really poised for a good uh, and exciting time ahead in India. Genomics is already starting to impact oncology. And like I was saying, one can now sequence the tumor genome and based on the sequence, one can identify potential targets. By targets, I mean there are drugs that can act on those targets, and they can start to shrink some of those tumors and prolong the lifespan, at least to some extent, of the cancer patients. This allows us a window that we have not had before. And it's not just drugs. There are many other biologics that are also entering because at this time, both researchers and pharmaceutical companies are investing in these types of somewhat alternative therapies, and these areas are going to continue to grow in the near future. All clinical research must be held up to the highest ethical standards, and that starts with a very proper and thorough review by institutional review boards. And institutional review boards may be called by different names. Sometimes they're called ethical review boards or something like that. But essentially, these are boards that are composed of scientists and even lay people and people with training in law who come up with uh, ways of approving a study from the beginning to the end once it's outlined and presented to the board. And only after it is approved can one begin research. This is how it is done in U.S. and many other countries. And I think in a, a country like India, it should be no different. But once uh, those uh, protocols are approved, I think there should be no barrier to either basic research or clinical research. And I think that there is a lot of potential once the regulatory infrastructures have been set up. Just given its population and the tremendous medical expertise, and along with that come the diversity of the different kind of cancers, including rare cancer types, I think India has a big role to play in the future. And what we are already seeing is that many pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies are starting to explore countries, not just India, but also other countries in the Southeast Asia, because they realize that a big chunk of patients are going to come from these countries. And in order to come up with precision medicine or targeted therapies, they need to understand what is happening in the tumors that are arising in patients from this country under these circumstances. And I think this first requires a lot of research. And after that, clinical trials can begin. And only after that are we going to see the fruits of this type of research really impact clinical care. So I feel in the next few years, countries like India can really take and play a dominant role in oncology research. Personalized medicine uh, is now being considered more and more as a mainstream way of thinking. Earlier, what we used to do was to classify cancers based on which part of the body the cancer arises. For example, if you have a cancer of kidneys, liver, brain. But now, 
we are all starting to think more and more in terms of molecular characterization of tumors. In other words, there is a possibility that the mutation that a skin cancer melanoma has is the same kind of a mutation that is shared by some lung tumors. So the rationale of personalized therapy here is that they should both be treated by drugs if they're available against that mutation that is causing that cancer and not different types of therapy just because it arises from the skin or it arises in the lung. I would say that basic scientists have superb training in India and clinicians have superb training in India. We are producing excellent basic scientists and excellent clinicians. But when it comes to the connection, I feel these are still too disparate. I think we don't have the advantage that some other countries in the West, especially the United States have. They have a long history of combining bench science to clinical medicine. And I think that is why, that is one of the reasons why they are so advanced in the field of biomedical research. Uh, I believe strongly in training of physician scientists, but also in imparting the appropriate clinical exposure to basic scientists. And I founded the Institute of Bioinformatics, which is really a systems biology institute in Bangalore about 13 years ago. And at that institute, what we are trying to do is just that. We are trying to build a team where PhD scientists work alongside clinicians and in close collaboration with clinicians in a number of hospitals. We also have many clinicians who are embedded within the Institute of Bioinformatics. And I'm also seeing this trend starting to sprout in many other hospitals. What I would of course like to see is that it needs to be accelerated and magnified if we are to achieve any of the levels that we see in other countries like the US or the UK and many other European countries. In fact, what I would like is for a new type of a track to be started where people start out as physicians like I started and then they go on a research path because often what is needed in the complex world of biomedical research is people who can make those clinical connections and then still are equipped with the type of molecular biology that is hardcore that today resides often in the minds of PhDs. Once we are able to connect these two worlds, I think we are going to be in an even better position to contribute from a country like India, where, like I said, we are very strong basic scientists and very strong clinicians, and will be able to truly harness the power of both worlds, especially given that we have a lot of clinical material available.